Yeah. My first guest is a good friend, and I think Jack Lemmon is probably one of the, if you had to choose four to five of the top actors in the entire world, he mm -hmm. would be. He is yeah. one of the most versatile performers I have ever met in my life. He can play anything. Good morning, Jack. Now, knowing Jack, if he heard that, he'll come out and say, well, uh, well you know, I, 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 I'm really not, you know. But he won't say that either. <laughs> if he does, it'd be better than that. <laughs> anyway, he's just completed, I can't believe this, but why would they lie? He just, he's completed his 37th picture in 28 years with Walter Matthau, which is called Buddy Buddy. And uh, Walter will be out a little later, but first, uh, why not? Here's Jack Lemon. <laughs> Hello, Jack. How are you? I understand you were out with our producer last night I or amongst was. him with Mr. DeCordova? He said that I had to wear the same suit and I had, had the thing pressed this morning. <laughs> oh, Lord. I just got back from New York and I got pneumonia. Uh, somebody told me it is really... Uh, it's very cool. You don't put your tongue on the pump handle back there. No, no, you don't. <laughs> where is it? Put it Do you ever remember when you were a kid and uh, <laughs> you'd go out and your mother would say and you'd see something... It's to never put your tongue on anything metal. Yeah. And you couldn't resist. And you'd go over and they'd have to come and pull you off of this thing. Where's home for you originally? I forgot. Originally, Boston. Boston. Yeah. Well, boy, did they have snow. Yeah. I, I, I mentioned this last night. You see what the poor mayor of Boston said the day before yesterday? They had a big snow. And because of all the cutbacks, I guess, that have happened, he said the city of Boston has used up their entire budget for snow removal last week. And that was the first <laughs> snow of the season. Boston's a great place to be during the holidays, though, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's one of the few major cities, really, I think, that has kept uh, enough yeah. of its tradition. And, and uh, uh, the marvelous places that were, you know, when, at least when I was a kid, about 180 years Come ago. Come on, now. And, I mean, historically. Uh, yeah, they've kept it. The... They really have. But out here, yeah. I find in California, it, it's a little tough for me to get into the Christmas spirit because, uh, you oh, know, sure. you equate it with yeah. snow, you equate it with cold weather and so forth. Yeah. Do you ever think about that? Did you ever go back home? John, I want to tell you something. I not only think about it, is the show going to continue this way? I mean, is this what we're going to <laughs> Our childhood. <laughs> were you dozing off there, Jack? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, uh, no. <laughs> Wonderful to see you. Oh, you're How absolutely you right. That was just a little kind of get acquainted, didn't I? We didn't really need that. How's your wife? She's oh, a lot she's cuter fine. than you are. How's, I'm yes, uh, how's your wife? You know, look, yeah, looking she's good? terrific, except Wonderful. she's sick in bed like I am. Well, it's nice that you come with all of this. Uh, huh? did you get, you oh, are you obvious? kidding? I wouldn't miss it. Okay, this is really moving along now. <laughs> <laughs> I keep... Oh, this, Lord. this will catch fire in a moment. Uh, you, you were out Don't late. The man's got the flu and he was out late last night, and uh, you probably had a couple. No. And, uh, no. No. Oh, oh, oh. No. Freddie did. I would. He said the same thing about you a moment ago. He did? Yeah. I don't well, drink. Everybody. Yeah. I think it's both our wives, is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We have both been known in our days, not as much as we used to. Oh, yeah. To have. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you can't really, you know, as an actor, you have to experience things. You can't just do things without knowing. <laughs> In other words, when you had to do for Days of Wine and Roses. Drove me to drink. Actually had to go out and... You know, I saw... Um, I don't mean just because you're here to compliment you, but I saw they were doing a retrospective of some films the other night, and they had... A, one of the scenes was yours from Days of Wine and Roses, and then they went com completely opposite that and played Mr. Roberts. And it was a wonderful oh. contrast, that one very heavy role, and then all of a sudden you were playing Ensign Pulver. And I got hysterical all over again. That's got to be one of your... Favorite pictures of all time. Oh, well, gosh, it, it is to Ward, me. Of course. Yeah. Uh, it, because I'll tell you why it isn't just, you know, having the opportunity, fortunately, which I've had so many times, and that's my good fortune of having a wonderful part. It, it was because I worked with Fonda and yeah. Cagney and Bill Powell, and the three of them, and it's like 20 years or something, and they're, they're still very, very close to yeah. me. This picture you made and, uh, uh, with, uh, with Walter, directed by your good friend, our good friend, uh, Billy Wilder. This is about the fourth time you and Walter have been in a picture together? Fourth, fifth. fifth fourth. Time. I directed Walter once. Well, I tried to direct him once. <laughs> that's going to be difficult. He did what he wanted to do, and it was his best performance. However... <laughs> I was going to say, that's going to be tough when you're good friends. 
and all of a sudden one actor is now directing another, that has to be a little dicey. Yeah, in a way, except you have a communication that's marvelous. And I yeah. kept trying to direct. I thought, well, the crew's around, you know, and I had the puttees. And you wanted to look official. I had the pith helmet. I had everything. I had yeah, a whip and everything. And I'd say, Walter, I have a marvelous idea. He said, I know what you mean. Yeah. And he'd go do it. And I never got to give the piece a direction that I thought everybody would applaud, you yeah. see. I never I never directed him. He, It's like a Mack truck with no brakes coming down a hill. You don't get out. You don't say stop. You know, yeah. If you're smart, you get out of the way. I got out of his way. That's well, so right. you read each other well. Let me take a break. We're going to be back. we got a film clip. We'll talk about some other things. And so Anything but snow in Boston. I keep trying to find out things about you, because I've known you for a number of years. Somebody told me, one of our staff, true, you were almost, or were born in an elevator, or is that one of those? Yeah. I thought it was just one of those. I was. Actually I was going up, up but, uh, uh, no, I was born in an elevator, according to my mother. Yeah, well, she would and know. And my father, except they used to call my father Lilac Lemon. Lilac uh, yeah, Lemon? Yeah, because nobody could Lilac Lemon, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> truthfully... He would tell these stories because he thought they might be amusing. Now, did your dad tell you the story? Did your mother say that? No, my mother. No, I, I think I was. And I got a letter from the Newton Wellesley Hospital. And incidentally, thank you for the T-shirt. I got a T-shirt. It's about this big. Made out of Jackie Lemon. Oh. It's a marvelous little thing. And it would fit a newborn baby and everything. But uh, they confirmed it, too. Yeah. I was born. It got stuck. Yeah. And uh, there I was. <laughs> I remember it vividly. <laughs> yes. What, what, you between floors? Oh, you yeah. Just, I just thought maybe. It did get stuck. <laughs> but I still am. However. What's the other now story I hear about one of your first things you did in the stage? Was it a snoring routine? Oh, yeah, I used to do that. Or whatever. I found when I was a kid, about, I don't know, about seven, eight years yeah. old, I wanted to be an actor because I'd started doing a couple of things in, in plays at school, right. you know, and it worked. I think kids, I don't think it's talent will out, if there is talent. I think it's a desire to be accepted. Right. Because I know everything, you know, I'm being an armchair analyst. But uh, I really do. I think that if you stumble timing, on something, yeah. yeah, you know, if you do something and other people say, hey, I liked that, right. then you say, oh, so you keep doing it, whether it's wood carving or painting yeah. or writing poetry. Or you probably also or found whatever. by you doing sounds, which most kids start, you, you get attention, yeah. you do sounds because you find yeah. that you can get a laugh very quickly. Like yes, you with the snoring sure. routine and uh, you, yeah. know, you become the life of the... Yeah. I used to do a thing in school that drove the teachers nuts. I want to see if I can still do it without even opening your mouth, like, like a chicken. You'd very close and go... <laughs> How the hell do you do that? What... <laughs> That killed him in the third grade. The bottom. Killed him. Killed him. What a nuts. That's terrific. And you could get attention. And you found out by you, doing I that, you'd, done get, it, I done you'd that. get attention. I, I, that was the whole yeah. thing. Um, t t about the picture, the, the buddy buddy uh, with Walter. Yeah. What's it about, basically? Because we got a little short basically, film Basically, it show. is only and singularly about a TV network censor. Right who uh, is suicidal because his wife has left him. Any other character is only incidental. Right. That's all it's about. That's all it's about. That's a, there's another guy in another room. He's a hit man, and uh, he wants to shoot a guy who's going into a court courthouse across the street, and he doesn't want any attention brought, naturally, right. up to the room because he's going to shoot with a high power. That's uh, uh, Matthew's... Uh, uh, Whatever. Matthew. Uh, Matthew. 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 Uh, but it's, it's incidental. He's, but I'll tell you something. In other words, it's in really a about... supporting part, he's not bad. Yeah. He's, he, yeah. He, in other words, he, he comes make, in a couple of little I scenes. I can spot it. I can spot talent when I see it. The guy should take up the acting dodge. Yeah. He's got There's a, no question. He's got he a shot make it. it. He was effective he, then. Yeah. He was all right. He's all right. What's left of him in the film. It's not bad. But it's not. What it slows the, uh, it down a little. I can understand not, that, yeah. You know. Now, in the scene we're going to see, is he in here at all, or... I don't little... know what you're going to say. What, what do we got <laughs> No, here? I think the scene... Freddie, am I right? It, it's... Uh, yeah. Scene? Walter has finally gotten so upset because time is getting close. At 2.22, a fellow's going to come across the street right. under armed guard and get out, and Walter's got to go... Right. ...across the, out the window and everything. And I keep running in from the next room with all different ways to commit suicide, one after another. And he keeps putting his rifle away under the bed and all of that. And finally, he can't stand it anymore. Right. He's got to shut me up. I believe that that's about Okay, what it here's is. a little excerpt from Buddy Buddy. Mm -hmm. 
We got a handkerchief. Both of them will come out talking. Anyway, uh, Walter, what was the name? Matt? Matthews. Matthews will yeah. be out in just a moment to join us and tell you about his part in the picture. Because he talks like this most of the time. Daddy does. We'll be back. All right, here is a uh, co conspirator in this picture. I think between both of us, we've given him really enough of an introduction, don't you? I, yeah, probably. He's a superb actor. Walter Matthau. Walter, come back here. Walter. Sit down and talk, Walter. My wife said, don't tell any uh, toilet jokes on the... On the she, you still remember she the earthquake story, Don't tell story, any huh? toilet jokes on the Johnny Carson show. And the guy came out. One of the cops came over and yeah. he just told me a toilet joke. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm going to try and tell it. See if I'll clean it up a little. All right. Three old guys sitting around convalescent home. Mm -hmm. One guy says, if I could just do number one... I mean, if I could do like a strong number one, right. like, you know, not in dribs and drabs. And... <laughs> the second guy says, if I could do a good number two, I mean, a solid one, you know, if... <laughs> the squeeze and I, it comes out, you know, it's... Terrible. Third guy says, I do wonderful number one, like torrential rains and pango pango. <laughs> like the Mississippi River. He says, that's at 7.30 every morning. And 7.35 in the morning, I have a wonderful number two. He says, like Mount St. Helens. He says, this is erupting. That's, that's at 7.35 in the morning. So the other guy says, he says, so what are you complaining about? He says, well, I don't get out of bed till 9. I <laughs> 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 I thought it was... This guy... Walter! This guy... Well... I'm glad you did that here before you did it on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I mean, which, uh, which you know, you're guesting on next week. Uh, uh, did you hear... <laughs> that's a funny story. That is a funny story. Did you hear what your uh, your friend here was calling you? Matthews. Su supporting Matthews. actor, Mr. Matthews, oh, yeah, and so yeah. forth. He's a brilliant director, by the way. Is he really now? Yes. Yeah. I am? Much okay. better director than he is an actor. <laughs> I've seen his, seen his work. Yeah. He is a brilliant director. That's the best picture I ever did. Koch. Yes, I'm You ever seen it? Yes, I did. he directed? Yes, I certainly did. Come on. I've seen all every picture you've ever made. <laughs> I have probably seen practically every picture you've ever made, and, and also Jack. You have? Well, maybe not everyone. Just try me. You're not that old. Well, I was almost Did old. you see Voice in the Mirror with Richard Egan and Julie London? I have, I have that on tape in my library. <laughs> no, I, 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 that was one of your earlier pictures, right? That was an earlier. Uh-huh. But any of your good stuff I've seen. <laughs> Well, you admit yourself, by, by the way you Very said that, line. was not a, uh, a blockbuster, right? <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, I've done about four good pictures. Oh, come on now. Maybe five. Six. Would you believe six? <laughs> <laughs> Is that one you just mentioned, one of the ones you would rather forget? Everybody's got a few in their... Uh, mm. Oh, no. Their no, I... Um, I like to argue with directors, and uh, I remember this particular picture I was arguing with, uh, I think it was Harry Keller was directing, and finally said to me, would you leave me alone? I'm really a cutter. And I said, okay. So I left him alone. But uh, Richard Egan said, you see, Matthau is a New York actor. He likes to argue. And I, I've never been able to get used to the fact that uh, a group of people get together 
to make what is supposed to be a creative work of art. Yeah. And they don't know each other. They simply get together. Right. They, you're rarely introduced to your fellow artists. And so I wanted to start some kind of a commotion in this so that I could get to know Julie London and Richard does this Egan. Help, does this help you work better if you it work does. a little bit uh, off a crisis? Huh? Yes, I'm does. serious. A lot of people have to work uh, close to the edge, they say, or walk along a tightrope. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, the, the fact that, that you come in and you don't know someone <laughs> is... Um, it, it's, it's dreadful. He's sleeping. You know what's happening, don't oh, you? Oh, yeah, he's you sleeping. Know, the old yeah. upstaging bit. He's downstage and he's uh, I know. taking yeah, it away. Isn't it? The poor guy has to do something. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> he's doing all the little... You're sitting here trying to be serious and he's doing playing to the audience. <laughs> no, do that? Uh, I, what I did was, um, with, uh, with Harry Keller, I said, wait a minute. I says, I can't say that alcoholism is an incurable disease. Uh, let's say that it's a disease for which medical science has not yet found a cure. Mm -hmm. And Julie London said, oh, well, that's a lot of baloney because I happen to have a friend who, who is an alcoholic and it is an incurable disease and so forth. And uh, I, I got her angry and, and that, I think, is what I wanted to do because right. then I got to know, then we spoke about it yeah. and, and, and we, and we, uh, we, we began to look at each other and, and know each other a little better. Right. In other words, just walk on cold and not have... Yeah. Any... <laughs> yeah. He's doing terrible things over there. We're trying to have a serious discussion. He can, do, a, he can do anything he wants art to. Art of filmmaking here. This kid can do anything he wants. Right. Right. Lemon. Let me do a, a word from one of our sponsors here, Andy, and we'll, we'll come back. We're back. We're talking with Walter Matthau and Jack Levin. <laughs> talking with Sacco and Vincenti here. Uh, it's way back. Um, I saw a picture of you in the uh, paper the night before last. You were at a function in tuxedo, and you were wearing what a lot of people have worn at one time or another, one of those cervical collars. And you were walking around like this. So was, that, was everything all right? It hurts every once in a while. Yeah. During the picture, I had to slide down a laundry chute. I had to throw him down the laundry chute to escape from the cops. And uh, it looked like a fairly simple job. It was about four feet. Right. And the grade wasn't more than about 15%. And we're supposed to land on uh, a bunch of mattresses. And the mattresses are on top of a scaffold, which is about 10 feet high. I didn't realize it was on a scaffold. I simply thought I'd hit the mattress, and that was it. Mm -hmm. Well, I kiddingly said to the director, Billy Wilder, I said, now, well, I can't, I, I, I can't do that. You want me to throw lemon in there? I, the poor guy will get killed. He said, no, 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 no. This is easy. Just do it. Listen to me. Don't argue, please. I how, said, would okay. Billy, how would Billy say that? Couldn't he say? No, I said, no, please, don't. You know, he <laughs> talks with a Stuttgart <laughs> accent. <laughs> and uh, and uh, he, I said, well, let me test it out. I went down, and the thing is, that when I was a kid, I was always afraid of those sliding uh, uh, gadgets. What do you call them? Slides. Sliding ponds? Call them slides. Slides. I was always afraid of that, and I... <laughs> slides. Slides. And I, I used to hold on like this, and this is what I did. I didn't want him to go first, because he wouldn't be here now. He'd be dead. And uh, I hit the mattress and went head up in the air and acted like a trampoline and landed on here busted a few bones, separated the clavicle here, and there I was in the most severe pain. I was in such pain that when the prop man came down, I know he, he carries a gun, and I said to him, Joe, please, shoot me. That's painful. That's very painful. It was that painful. Lemon was white as a ghost. He ran down, and he took off his jacket, and he rolled his jacket up, and he put it under my head, and he said, are you comfortable? <laughs> and I said, I make a nice living. <laughs> I said, I've got a few dollars. <laughs> You're going to look at me with a straight no. face and do that, aren't you? No, <laughs> no what I, got I really dollars. said, no, that's, that's a joke. But what I really said was, that's a joke. Yeah. But what I really said was, Jack, 
It's curtains. Yeah. You I really thought? thought? That's what I said. I never expected to live more than another 10 minutes after that. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I was in the most vile pain. Just terrible. But the marvelous thing is he, he loves the English language and the use yes, of the I English know. language correctly. I mean, you know, he like in the dressing room earlier this evening, he was saying, what about, what was that marvelous word you came oh, up with? Oh, the tautological things. I have them right Tortologic, here. Tautological. Tautological things. And if a writer writes baby a cliche. Puppies, baby puppies. Baby puppies. It's tautological. Baby, repetition. Okay. Anyway. Tautological. Baby okay. puppies. It's okay. also redundant, right? Redundant. 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 Yes. Anyway, the point is, he is so hip. And if a writer writes a cliche, you yeah. know, uh, some phrase that you normally hear, which is what we always fall back on in an emergency, but and that's how it becomes a cliche, he goes crazy. But I swear to God, I leaned over him, and my face was this way, his face was back like that, and the man was writhing in pain. He had his hand in his heart, and I thought, oh my God, this yeah. is it. You know, I really thought frankly, that Walter was dying. And I couldn't believe it when he looked up at me and he stopped the moaning suddenly. He looked up and he said, it's curtains. <laughs> I couldn't believe that he would say it, but he did. Yeah. Well, he did. I, I, I don't think I said it with that much emotion, Jack. <laughs> Walter. He had a very good delivery You're on that. You're not that I mean, good that's... an actor. <laughs> <laughs> You put a little too much. You know, when he directed me, he came over to me and I said, you're not going to tell me how to act, are you? Yeah. Can I, can I ask you something? I noticed yes. when you made a gesture a moment ago, you have some initials here, but they're not yours. So, it's wardrobe. It says it's wardrobe. CCW. Now, you want to... Is that... Uh... I got this shirt in a movie I did. <laughs> what? My Good name on. was Charles Cackfield Whittingham. Yeah. And in order to make me feel as though the shirt really belonged to me. <laughs> right. They put those initials on it. Right. As a matter of fact, I asked them to do that. You see, Billy Wilder got me into that. Right. Eric von Stroheim, when he played Rommel. Yeah. He had a camera. He said, I want film in the camera because the audience knows when there is no film in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's Billy. That's Billy. We'll be right back. CCW. Ha, 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 ha.